This is another wet cleaner. It's a, an electrolysis de-ruster. So it, this works by having a sacrificial anode, which is this connection here. You can put on red, positive anode. You don't want these touching. And then this is the cathode, which is your, your parts that you want to de-rust the metal hooks making contacts I'm not going to be using it I'm just showing how it would be used this is from a very old battery charger transformer type you can't use um, a modern battery charger intelligent which works off the frequency chopping the mains to drop it you need a transformer for this application that I'm going to show um, so this is showing you current for me I don't want too much current going through here because current is that's what causes the damage a, a gentle trickle will cause electrons to migrate from the cathode across to the sacrificial anodes of course sacrificial you can see how rusty they are here is the previous water level so below that was wet and attracted rust above it was out of the water and didn't so you can see how it pulls loose rust from these items and uh, see how rusty this one is the problem is that to get the current supply that you want, a couple of amps is fine for me. Um, water, fresh water is an insulator, pretty much anyway. So you put your water in here, turn this on, you'll get hardly any current to flow. So it'll take forever. So what is recommended is to use sodium carbonate washing soda and you just sprinkle it in and the salts reduce the resistance of the water and you can see on the ammeter as the current starts flowing the problem with that is if you put a bit too much in you can't take it out again it's quick and easy not a problem but it's a one-way trip so if you use the mains controller with the battery charger you can reduce the voltage that this gives out and reduce the current to suit i mean you're not monitoring voltage here you're monitoring the current so if i want one and a half to two amps i can turn down the mains supply to this until i get that so that's explained what this is about. Now I'll demonstrate that, not with the electrolysis rust remover, but using some 12 volt car electrics. I've connected up the battery charger to a 12 volt car headlamp bulb. So if I turn that on, you see the current that's being drawn. Now, if that was the tank which was passing too much current from the cathode to the anode by connecting up the controller here as I reduce it you can see that the current drops down to a more manageable level in this case the headlamp bulbs getting dimmer which I won't keep it on too long because the headlamp bulb gets quite hot and draws a fair bit of current, high wattage. Um, but it lets you see that you can use a transformer type of power supply. In this case, it's a battery charger, but anything with a transformer that gives you whatever the normal output voltage is, you can use this 
mains controller to reduce from maximum voltage down to whatever you preset the level at. I'll switch over to a couple of other items just to let it be a bit clearer. I'm switching back to the other mains controller because it's got separate outlets on it which allows me to plug in this so now we're reading input voltage input voltage to the battery charger this is after the speed controller circuit the battery charger is connected up there's the output of the battery charger now the only load is this very small bulb so normally a battery charger has to supply about 14 15 volts to get any current flowing into the battery which is nominally 12.6 volts so you have to have a higher voltage to be able to put volts into your battery but if it's not loaded then the no load voltage of the transformer is going to be about 16 17 volts like this is if that was driving into the load of a battery that would drop down to about 14 volts this is just to show though that changing the input voltage to the battery charger or any transformer power supply reduces the output voltage the bulbs just to let you see it happening so you can have quite a handy variable power supply for controlling DC motor speeds etc okay enough of that a final note about using a battery charger for electrolysis derusting the positive is a sacrificial anode the negative are the parts that you want to derust the action of the electrolysis passing electricity through the water breaks down the water into its constituent parts which is hydrogen and oxygen and you'll get oxygen forming around the anode and hydrogen forming around the cathode now oxygen is very reactive with anything I mean you won't get a fire to burn unless there's oxygen to go with the fuel hydrogen that was what the Hindenburg was filled with um, so if you use this is a potentially very dangerous mix of gases coming off it only takes a spark and you've got hydrogen and oxygen sat next to each other so do it outside do it in a well well ventilated area and don't pass too much current through because if you uh, two amps is gentle that's fine it'll take 24 hours simmering away if you pass too much the action becomes very violent in the liquid the electrolyte things can move and it only takes touching the cathode to the anode and you potentially have sparks which can ignite things so it's just something to be aware of and while we're on about battery chargers here's a tangent this is a high current one that we can also use for starting and I've cut the cables off and put on an Anderson connector these are marked positive and negative and if you try and put the two mating ones together you have to reverse it so it's always positive to positive negative to negative you can't go wrong 
this one you can get different sizes but this particular one is rated at um well 600 volts but it's a battery charger so i'm not too worried about that um but 175 amps that's the important thing but if you have a look at that cross-sectional area there it's that that allows these cables to pass such high current in this case um, I think it's about 40 amps is normal max charge I'm not sure about that but but the thing is you need the cross-sectional area to pass high current that's going to be relevant in a minute I'll come back to that the reason I cut the cable off and put plugs on is I still have my battery charger available but I have two of these fitted to my camper one up the front near the driver's area to which is connected through to the battery but via an isolator and one at the rear I can open the rear doors and there's a cable goes all the way through to the battery again via an isolator so I can either give someone a jump start or someone can give me a jump start from the front or the back and without having to open the bonnet because on my Renault Master the battery is inside the cab uh, you have to unscrew a, a metal lid for it so this allows easy access more than that is I've made up an extension cable so I don't know if you can get an idea of the length it's about two meters this one I've got another couple of others in different places but that lets me extend the jump leads to a total of three meters I also have another set of jump leads which are themselves two meters long which I've cut off put a connector on so that gives me actual jump leads and I can put the extension cable in between to make them the length of the van or longer like I say I've got a couple of these so that's just in case anyone's interested in extending their battery on their vehicle and um, with high current capability they're called Anderson connectors and like I say this one's 175 amps so that should start your vehicle whatever it is notice the similarity between this I'll unplug it because I'll come back to that and this this is a cheap stick welder you can adjust the current which goes from not a lot up through 40 amps 50 amps 80 amps and here's a corresponding diameter of the welding rods that you would use right this is millimeters 1.6 millimeters 2 millimeters 2.5 millimeters remember those we'll come back to them but for that stick welder here's the earth clamp and here's the electrode clamp this electrode isn't for that welder it's for a, a larger arc welder but all that is is a metal rod coated with flux so that when it strikes an arc the flux covers the area 
and prevents the oxygen from corroding the the metal. So you can use your jump lead cable to hold the electrodes just as well as the uh, electrode holder that you get with a welder. This one would be too thick. So then here's other sizes. If you have a look at that, it's smaller than the copper conductor that you will get in a lot of mains cables. All right, this is mild steel, not copper, but the diameter of it is smaller. And yet, you strike an arc with this and weld pieces of metal together. And the current for doing that is about 40 amps for this size of wire, up to 50 perhaps. Depends on the thickness of the metal that you're trying to weld as well. Um, you can do that with a car battery. Small electrodes, you won't have a face shield, but that's not very good anyway, the one that you get with the well. But you can buy an automatic one from eBay for this one cost me 14 pounds. It has sensitivity control so that it's like having adjustable sunglasses. You can have it fully off and then adjust it to whatever point you want it to switch on. There's, there's all sorts of adjustments that you have, but the point is you can get a welding helmet quite cheaply. You can get electrodes from anywhere and you can use a car battery to weld with. If what you're doing is a, not enough current, you use two batteries in series. It's just, the point is that you need high current capability for your earth clamp and for your electrode, but the electrode itself need not be a solid great big lump, it can be quite fine. And that is relevant when we now get back to our mains.